Hello and welcome to my pre-algebra review series. This video covers chapter 2, section 5, titled Solving Equations by Adding or Subtracting. By the end of this video, you will have explored the concept of solving equations by adding or subtracting. Presented here are both the subtraction property of equality and the addition property of equality. Please leave a like if you find this video to be helpful. Give your classmates a heads up too. It will more than likely help them, and it certainly will help this channel to be seen by more students. If you would like me to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I read them and do my best to answer each as time permits. Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Thank you. Let's go. Let's get to it. Okay, before we get started, we'll talk uh, about a definition here called inverse operations. And what, what are inverse operations? When you solve an equation, your goal is to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. The other side tells you the solution of the original equation. You use inverse operations, which undo each other, to get the variable alone. Okay, objective one, using subtraction to solve equations. Solving an equation is like keeping a barbell balanced. If you add weight to or subtract weight from one side of the barbell, you must do the same to the other side. In previous math courses, you used related equations like 3 plus 5 equals 8 and 8 minus 3 equals 5. These equations show that addition and subtraction undo each other. And then a key concept here, the subtraction property of equality. You can subtract the same number from each side of the equation. So instead of starting with the arithmetic side, let's look at the algebraic side here. It says if A, right here, if A equals B, then A minus C is equal to B minus C. And looking at the arithmetic here, you see that this is the if statement. If 10 equals 2 times 5, then, T-H-E-N, 10 minus 5 is equal to 2 times 5 minus 5. That's what this is saying and how you can read it and see it here. After you solve the equation, you use the result in the original equation, as will be shown in our example one, to check that your solution is correct. You should always check that your solution is correct. A small mistake in the math, and then the whole answer is wrong. Okay. Example one, subtracting to solve an equation. So let's solve x plus six equals four. And that we're showing two methods here. Both are the same, you get the same result, but it's the way you will view it. It's a little differently, and, and I'm sure you'll recognize this when we get through it. So method one, x plus six equals four. So what do we do? We sub t subtract six from each side. We're allowed to subtract the same number as we just heard earlier about the barbell we were talking about. If you subtract something from one side, you have to do it the same thing to the other side. So if we're trying to get rid of the six, we're trying to get x, the x by itself on one side of the equation. That means we have to get rid of the 6 on that same side and move it over to the side where the 4 is at, which is the opposite side of the equation. In order to do that, we're going to subtract it from the x side. You see the negative 6 right here. But we have to also put a negative 6 on this side, on the, the right-hand side, along with the 4. And when we do that, we have x plus 6 minus 6. Well, plus 6 minus 6 equals 0. And then we have 4 minus 6 is x equals minus 2, or negative 2. Okay? And to check it, we can take the negative 2, where this x is, x plus 6 equals 4. We can replace x with the negative 2, our solution from up here. And it says negative 2 plus 6, is that equal to 4? So we've replaced it. And the answer is yes. If you subtract 2 from 4... You're going to have fours, and that e is equal. The other method we were talking about here is where you have your equation written out, and then you treat it like a subtraction problem. 
where you can just like say you used to say minus and you'd say this the top row here the number here minus what's on the bottom row but so we do we look at this we say we bring down the x the x comes down this six and this six here and this six here cancels each other out and the four plus the minus six ends up being negative two and that ends up being the solution for example one under check your understanding the directions say solve each equation we're going to do it just like we did in the previous slide for all three of these problems but before i get started solving them here with you i want you to stop the video try them out yourself see if you can do it see how you end up where you end up and then when you come back we'll solve them together so i'll wait for you go ahead okay so now that you've had time to stop the video try these problems and come back now we'll talk about them together a problem a x plus 8 equals 3 so we said the, the the goal here is to get the x the x term on one side of the equation and we're I'm going to select the left side and everything else the number and everything else that's not x to be on the right side of the equation so in order to do that we're going to have to subtract we, to get rid of an 8 on one side, we have to subtract, if it's a positive 8, we have to subtract 8 from that side to, get, to make it equal to 0. So we're going to say x plus 8 minus 8 is equal to 3, but now we have to have the minus 8 on both sides. Remember the barbell statement. You have to have the equal barbell, whatever you do to one side. If you take a a piece some weight off of one side of a barbell you have to take the same amount off on the other side so we're going to have a negative eight on this side the same amount negative eight on both sides so then when we simplify this we're going to get x and then this eight here and this eight here cancel each other out so that's zero so it's just going to be x equals and on this side we have three minus eight well three minus eight is you're right, minus 5. Okay, that's the solution. You want to put it back in and try it? We'll take put minus 5 in where the x is. So we say minus 5 plus 8. Does that equal, we put a little question mark up here, does that equal 3? And if you say 8 minus 5 is how much? 3. That's a check. This is correct. Let's go to B. 5 We'll do this. 5 equals d plus 1. Well, we have to get the variable by itself on one side or the other. It does not matter which side it's on. You can move the d, you can do two steps, and move the d over to the left side over here, and then move the 5 over here to the right side, or you can just leave the d where it is, and we can just move the 1 to where the 5 is. And then we'll have the d by itself on the right-hand side and the constants by themselves on the left-hand side. So let's do that. So we're going to say, I'm going to go from here. I know I'm going to have the, a negative 1. I'm going to say 5 minus 1. That's the negative 1 I know I'm going to put here is equal to d plus 1 minus 1 because I'm going to have the minus 1 on both sides. And then when you simplify this, you're going to get 5 minus 1 is 4, and that equals d, and then the two 1s cancel each other out, the negative 1 and positive 1, so d is equal to 4. So now to substitute 4 in for d in the original equation, we can say 5 is equal to 4, that's the d right here, is equal to 4 plus 1. And is that true? 5, does that equal to 4 plus 1? Yes, correct. Now we go to C. C plus negative 4 equals negative 5. It's a little more complex, but not really. So on this side, we're going to say C. The C is on the left-hand side. We have plus negative 4, okay? So we can, we can roll this out and get rid of the negative 4. We could say minus 4 which might be a little easier. Why don't we do that? We'll just take it and resolve this plus minus combination here, and it'll end up being, this is a multiplication, by the way, we'll end up ending up with a negative four. So we're gonna say C minus four 
is equal to 5. Oh, excuse me, negative 5. We haven't done anything other than just resolve this piece of the equation right here, this plus the negative 4. So now we're going to get the 4 to the right-hand side. We have a negative 5 on this side already, so I'm going to say C minus 4 plus 4. So you have to do the opposite. Minus 4 plus 4 is equal to negative 5 plus 4. And negative 5 plus 4, if we simplify this, C is equal to, because the 4s cancel, negative 5 plus 4 is equal to negative 1. If you put a negative 1 back in for C, it's going to be negative 1, negative 1, plus the quantity negative 4 equals negative 5. Well, if you have a negative 1 plus a negative 4, you add a negative 4 to a negative 1, you're going to get a negative 5. And negative 5 does equal negative 5. Okay? So, okay, example 2, a real-world problem. Fred's target heart rate is 130 beats per minute. This is 58 beats per minute more than his resting heart rate. Find his resting heart rate. So in words, we can look at this question we have here and try to place the words in, in a way that we can make an equation out of it. So we're saying the target heart rate, which we know is 130 beats per minute, is 58 beats per minute more than his resting heart rate. So it says right here, it, this is 58, right here, 58 beats per minute more than his resting heart rate. Find his resting heart rate. So that's the words. What are we looking for? We're looking for the resting heart rate. Well, we're going to use an R as the variable for resting, the resting heart rate. And then we're going to write the equation based on the words. So the equation says 130 beats per minute, Fred's target heart rate, target heart rate, right here, target heart rate, 130 beats per minute, is equal, is equal to, right here's the is, 58 beats per minute, 58 beats per minute, plus his resting heart rate. 58 more than the resting, but if we add the two together, then we'll have what the total 130 is. So we're looking for R, right here. We're looking to solve R. So we're going to put our equation together, 130 equals 58 plus R. And we have to get the R, the resting heart rate, by itself on one side of the equation or the other. So it looks like we're going to keep it on the right-hand side here. And we're going to say 130 plus R, uh, 130 equals R, excuse me, 130 equals R plus 58. That's the commutative property. We've moved, just moved these two around. The R and the 58, we just switch places with them. And in so doing it, now we have the 58 at the end, so when we add in our negative number, it'll be right there next to it. It'll be a little more obvious. So in order to get the R by itself, we have to remove the 58 from the right-hand side. So in order to do that, we're going to subtract 58 from both sides. Subtract 58 from both sides. 130 minus 58 is equal to R minus 58 plus or, or plus 58 minus 58. Well, the R plus 58 minus 58 this simplifies to R only. We've gotten rid of the 58s. And 130 minus 58 leaves us 72. So R is equal to 72. This resting heart rate, 72 beats per minute. And remember, when you're solving story problems like this or word problems, and you have units, here we have beats per minute or whatever, always answer the question. Always answer the question with a, with a statement saying what the beats are, what, what 72 really means. It's very important to define the units in your answer. Okay, example two. Let's check your understanding. Directions. Solve this problem here. Cora measures her heart rate at 123 beats per minute. This is 55 beats per minute more than her resting heart rate, R. Write and solve an equation to find Cora's resting heart rate. Well, this is exactly like the problem we just did on the previous slide. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to wait and let you stop the video. 
solve this problem on your own, take a look at it, come back, and we'll do it together. So, okay, you've had time now to solve this problem on your own, at least look at it and think about it. Uh, so it is exactly like the previous problem. And we'll start by writing out some words that kind of put the equation in words on the paper so we can then write the equation. And it says here that Cora's heart rate, her current heart rate, I'm just going to say her heart rate right here, heart rate is equal to 123 beats per minute. And, and that is, it says this, that 123 beats per minute, this is, which means equal, equals, 123 equals 55 beats per minute more than her resting heart rate are. Well, so it's her resting heart rate plus 55. Because R, the resting rate, plus 55 equals 123. So write an equation and solve it. Well, guess what? This wrote itself, this equation. It's right there in front of us. So we're going to say 123 is equal to R plus 55. That's the equation here that we're, we're given on paper. Now they want us to solve it. Well, in order to solve this, we have to subtract 55 from each side. Why? Because the, we're told we need to get the R or the variable by itself on one side. Doesn't matter which side is on, but on one of the sides, it's already on the right side, we can leave it on the right hand side. So, in order to get the R by itself, we have to subtract 55 away from the R side and then put that subtraction also on the left hand side because when you do something to one side, you have to do the same thing to the other side. So, we're going to rewrite this and I'm going to say 123. And since we're, this is a plus 55 right here, we have to do a minus 55. So minus 55, and that is equal to R plus 55 minus 55. This action right here with the minus 55 is what's necessary to remove the, fifth, the, fifth, the positive 55 because we're using the opposite. And the opposites, as we know from the additive inverse, we know this and these additive properties that this is zero. Okay, so now we get, we're, we're going to have the R by itself equals to R on this side. And on, on the left hand side, it's 123 minus 55, which if we do the math and simplify, it's 68. So the answer to this equation is R equals 168. R equals, uh, not 168, excuse me, 68 beats per minute, beats per minute. Okay, there's the answer. And if we want to check it, we have to substitute in for the R, 68, and let's try it. We'll say 123 equals 68 plus 55. And if we add these together, 5 and 8 is 13, carry the 1. 5 and 6 is 11, carry plus 1 is 12, so 123. Check. Okay. Objective 2, using addition to solve equations. It's really, truly exactly the same as we did for the subtraction. It's just a different sign. So when you solve an equation using subtraction, Add the same number to each side of the equation. It's simple. If you have a negative uh, number that you're trying to move and get rid of, you have to just add in the positive, the opposite. So the concept here, the key concept here, is for the addition property of equality, you can add the same number to each side of an equation. So here, algebraically, over here on the algebra side, algebraically, we say if A equals B, then a plus some number c is equal to b plus some number c. So you can add any number, you can add any, as long as the same number, you can add any number to each side of the equation and it does not change the result of the equation. So when looking back at the arithmetic side, so it kind of puts it in perspective so that they're constant numbers to look at, eight is the if part, if, 
8 equals 2 times 4, and it does, we know it does, 2 times 4 is 8. Then 8 plus 3 is equal to 2 times 4 plus 3. That's what this is saying. Okay, example 3, adding to solve an equation. So in this case, they say solve the equation b minus 12 equals negative 49. So let's start off. It's going to be hopefully pretty simple here. So we start off with the equation b minus 12 is equal to negative 49. And what, is it, what do we know now about solving equations? The first rule is to get the variable by itself on one side or the other of the, equa of the equal sign. So since it's already on the left side, we'll leave it on the left side. And in order to get rid of, get, make the b by itself, we have to get rid of the negative 12. And to remove the negative 12, we, we have to add positive 12, because negative 12 and positive 12 is 0. Well, if we add positive 12, as you see right here, if we add positive 12 to the side with the variable, we have to add positive 12 to the side with the constant, the negative 49. So we have to add 12 to each side. And when we do that and we simplify, we're going to get the b by itself, the 12s cancel, and we'll end up with b equals four minus or negative 49 plus 12 is 37, negative 37, our solution. Okay, example three, check your understanding. So as before, we're going to solve these equations, and I'm going to let you do these on your own. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stop the recording or the, the video playback and try them yourself and when you're done come on back and we'll work them together so go ahead and do it if you choose to okay now that you've had the time to stop and come back and look at what you think you you have and i'm sure you're, you've got it correct we'll solve them together so solve each equation a says y minus y minus five is equal to eight okay so what what's the first rule get the variable by itself okay at this point if we had if there are more compound problems if we had like multiplication and division in here we'd have to solve that first but right now we only have addition and subtraction so we're going to leave the y by itself on the left hand side and in order to get the left hand side by its the y by itself we're going to have to add a positive five so a negative 5 and a positive 5 cancel each other out. And then whatever we do on one side, you know it. You have to put it on the other side also. So in our case, we're going to say, we're going to say y minus 5 plus 5 is equal to 8 plus 5. The 5s now, now that we have this new equation, the 5s will cancel. We can draw a line through them, and we end up with y is equal to 8 plus 5. While we simplify, it's going to be 13. The solution here. And if I put a 13 up here in the equation, if I said 13 minus 5 equals 8, would I be correct? 13 minus 5 is equal to 8, and 8 is equal to 8. So that checks. Okay? B. P minus 30 equals 42. Okay, let's start off. We'll say P minus 30 equals 42. So the first rule here, since we have nothing but subtraction and addition in our problems in front of us, is to get the P by itself. And it's on the left side. We'll leave it on the left side. So in order to get the P by itself on the left side, we have a negative 30 on this left side. We have to add 30 so it can cancel the negative 30. So we're going to have p minus 30 plus 30, and that equals 42 plus 30. Okay? So when we, subs when we now simplify this, we're going to add here and add here. So we're going to get the p plus and minus 30 equals 0. And then the 42 plus 30 simplified is 72. There's our answer. And if we put 72 in up here in the P, if we say 72 minus 30 
is equal to 42. We can ask the question, is that true? 72 minus 30 is equal to 42, so we'd say 42 is equal to 42. Okay, check. Now, C, 98, now the X is on the right-hand side, and we'll leave it there. 98 is equal to X minus 14. Well, starting right here, we know that we want to get the X by itself, and it's on the right side. So we're going to take that minus 14 and somehow get rid of it on the left, on the right rather, and put it on the right, on the left. So how do we do that? We do that by adding plus 14 to both sides. So we're going to have 98 plus 14 is equal to x minus 14 plus 14. And then now when we simplify this by doing our addition, our addition these 14s are going to cancel out because minus 14 and positive 14 are 0. So we're going to add 98 plus 14. 98 plus 10 is 108 plus 4 is 112. So we're going to have 112 is equal to x. And if you put it back in, you could say, is 98 equal to 112 minus 14? And without going through the steps to check the answer is, is correct. Okay, example four, real world problem solving. Your friend's VCR cost $328 less than her TV. Her VCR cost $179. How much did the TV cost? Well, to put this into words, we see that the cost of the VCR, which is right now we know it's $179, is less than, it says here, the cost of the VCR, the VCR is $320 less than the TV. So the cost of the VCR is here, and we know that $328, that price is $328 less than what the TV cost. So the VCR... $179 is less, was to $328 less than the cost of the TV. So we're going to let T equal the cost of the TV, because that's what they're asking the question. What did the TV cost right here? Let T equal the cost of the TV, and we'll find out that 70 to 179, which is the cost of the VCR, is or was, is less than, or is equal to T, the the cost of the TV minus $328. Because it says the VCR was $328 less than the TV. So that's what this equation is. $179 equals the TV minus $328. So when we carry this out and complete it, we have the T is already on one side, and we can leave it on the right-hand side. It doesn't matter. So we can, how do we get the T by itself? We need to get the $328, the negative, to the opposite side, to the left-hand side. We need to move it over here to this side, okay? In order to do that, we're going to add 300. This is negative 328. We're going to add $328 right here, add 328 to each side. So 179 plus 328, because we added 328 to this side, that is equal to the T minus 328, the original part of the equation, plus 328. So the minus 328 and the plus 328 cancel on the right side, and the 328 positive adds to the 379 on the left-hand side. So when you simplify this, the cost of the TV is 507 bucks. So how do you do that? 8 plus 9 is 17, carry the 1. There's your 7, carry the 1. 2 plus 7 is 9, carry the 1 is 10, so now you have a 0. Here's our 0. We carried a 1. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus the carried 1 is 5. 300, uh, uh, T is equal to $507. Your friend's TV cost $507. Okay, example 4. Check your understanding. Directions. Solve. So here's the problem. A soft cover book costs $17 less than its hardcover edition. The soft cover costs $5. Write an equation to find the cost H of the hardcovered book. So go ahead and stop your video at this point and try it. See what you come up with. 
we can wait. Okay, now that you're done, you've, so, you've tried to solve the equation, let's see if we can come up with an answer here together on this. So basically, just like the previous slide, it says the soft cover, cover book costs $17 less than the hardcover book. So I say the soft cover is less than the hardcover, and it and it's hard then it's hardcover edition, and it costs five dollars. So we know that the sum or difference or whatever of the soft cover and the hardcover book up here is a value of five dollars because you're going to subtract. You're going to say the hardcover book's cost minus seventeen dollars is the price of the soft cover book. So we're going to do that right here. We're going to say the soft cover book five dollars is equal to the hard the price of the hardcover book h minus 17 dollars hardcover minus 17 is equal to 5 minus 17 dollars so this is we're going to solve this by getting the h by itself and we're going to find out that by adding we're going to do that to add 17 to both sides so if i have 5 plus 17 is equal to h minus 17 plus 17. And when you do that, the 17's cancel. The h is left by itself. h equals h. 5 and 17 is equal to, that's right, 22. Okay, so h is equal to 22.